Thank you for tuning in to our series on flex and rigid flex. I am Tara Dunn. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about designing for rigid flex, advice by engineers for engineers. So as part of this series, I went out and polled some of my industry friends who are um, designing flex and rigid flex on a very regular basis and asked them to share their best tips and tricks for people that might be new um, or less experienced with flex and rigid flex design. So the advice that they sent back was amazing and it was kind of grouped into three different categories. There was materials, design, and fabrication. So we're going to start today with the materials. The underlying theme uh, of the materials is to choose wisely. Um, first of all, is the product going to be a dynamic flex or a flex to install? And be sure to select the appropriate materials for either application. Um, unfortunately, um, over time, I can say that um, most people who are designing flex and rigid flex ultimately will end up with the, the flex that doesn't flex. Um, the material's thickness can build up much more quickly than you anticipate. Uh, so being very aware of the materials that you're selecting and how they need to perform in end use is very important. Um, and then, how flexible is a flex is, a, is another good question. Um, be careful not to overspec the copper weight in your design. Um, for example, if you're using a one ounce copper, that's 1.4 mils of copper, and just in regular processing, your fabricator is going to plate approximately another mil of copper on that panel as they're plating those plated through holes. So that adds another mil of copper to that 1.4, and before you know it, that flex can be much more thick than you expect it to be. And then the final piece of advice in the materials section was if at all possible, route um, your conductors to the single layer in a bend area. So um, if possible in a double-sided, route those up to the top side, removing the copper in the bottom side of that, which is going to greatly reduce the thickness of that overall flex, which is going to increase um, your bend radius and flexibility. So if we move over to the design category, the advice given here was all about flex sizing. So what are the little tips and tricks that you can do as a designer to ensure that your flex is going to be as robust as possible? Um, the first piece of advice that came in was to use anchors. So anchors, tie downs, rabbit ears, they can have different names. But be sure to add those anchor tie points um, from the pad to be encapsulated by the coverlay to help ensure that the pads are not lifting during assembly. And this is particularly important for single-sided flex that does not have a plated through hole to help anchor that um, annular ring down as well. And then cutouts. Um, so use cutouts in the flex if possible and if there's space. Um, kind of think along the line of a, a net or a chain link fence. If there's an area um, with a tight bend radius that you're able to remove material from altogether, that's going to just greatly increase the flexibility of the material. Um, another piece of advice given from a designer was to pay attention to the inside corners and add a radius to all of the inside corners of at least 30 mils. That's going to help um, reduce the opportunity of tearing for that flex. Another great piece of advice is to add layer to layer crosstalk by offsetting traces on adjacent layers. And then add stiffeners when required to avoid stress points, um, but also very important when you're adding a stiffener to be sure that you are overlapping your coverlay um, endpoint by at least 30 to 50 mils to be sure that you're not introducing an added stress point unintentionally. And then the next series of advice that came in has to do with conductor routing. So always with a flex, you're going to want to be aware to use round, smooth curves and transitions. You're going to want to route uniformly and perpendicular to that fold line. And make sure you're not transitioning those traces either in thickness or direction in a bend or fold area. Um, that's very important. And then just in general, ab avoid abrupt changes to conductor size and direction anywhere in the design. And then be aware of how your product is going to bend or fold in end use. Is there a possibility that that fold could become a crease, which could then become cracked conductors? And if so, is there some way you can mitigate that in your design? And then finally, in the design section, the advice was given to teardrop pad patterns um, at your conductor trace interface to help alleviate some of that stress. That is probably the one of um, the areas in a flex design that is most prone to bending is cracking is that trace to pad interface. Then we're going to move on to the fabrication section. And the best advice for that is 
communication. So a lot of that advice has to do with communicating with your fabricator. So knowing how your fabricator's process works is going to be very important and how they construct material and do their layups. Important to know during your design as well as your manufacturer's capability matrix. Um, know where their sweet spot is, where their technology levels begin and end, so you're not designing outside of those areas, creating um, yield issues and reliability issues um, for both your fabricator and for your final design timeline. And then be sure to have a manufacturing and engineering review early in the design with your fabricator. You want to make sure that it's going to be manufacturable through their facility and processes, and then also, if possible, um, be able to be fabricated with common materials. They're already in stock at your fabricator. And if they're not in stock with your fabricator, that's a really good time to be able to talk about, can you pre-order to cut down some, on some of that lead time? And then always be sure that your documentation package clearly matches the design and that material callouts are very clear. Um, it kind of defies logic, but one of the simplest things that happens often enough is that the flex layers are just not clearly labeled on the fab drawing. So everybody has to kind of stop and, and regroup at that point. And then make sure that you're communicating your flexing requirements clearly with your fabricator. Um, fabricators are working with flex day in and day out, and they can certainly help make um, suggestions and adjustments to improve the flexibility of your design. And then finally, make sure that you are working with your fabricator to be sure that you are not introducing added cost to your design. And a great example of that is a three-layer rigid flex design that had come in. Three layers was chosen um, for the thought of keeping the layer count down, keeping the overall cost down. So this was a rigid flex with a flex on each of the outer layers and a rigid piece in the middle to support the dense component areas. The design worked, it functioned, but ultimately it was more expensive than it needed to be. Changing that over to a four layer, more typical flex construction with the rigid layers on the outer layers helped reduce the need for laser cutting that cover lay, helped um, allow them to put more parts on the panel because tight registration was not required when the four layer design to the degree that it was in the three layer design. So ultimately moving to four layers actually ended up saving 20% in the overall cost. So that's just one example of working with your communicator to be sure you're not inadvertently introducing um, unneeded cost. So just to recap, um, what we just talked about in this episode, we talked about real-world advice given by um, design engineers for design engineers. Uh, we talked about three categories of advice, materials, design, and fabrication. So I hope you found that information valuable, and please share that with your friends and colleagues who might be interested in that information as well, and hope that you will join us for our next video segment, which is going to be tips for communicating and documentation for your prototypes. Mm -hmm.